This is the In-Laws Podcast from 1718 Media. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a rating if you enjoy the show. My name is Arthur. I'm Philip. And I'm John. <laughs> That's the freaking McAfee virus, bro. <laughs> Yo, I want to shout that, out a funny that, tweet early. You on that Android add that, computer? Add, add that to the... Um... What is it? The the other things that you say that's super weird. I thought it was McAfee. McAfee. Yeah, it is McAfee. He just doesn't know how to talk. We'll say McAfee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm like yes, no. I said it three times, and I was like, bro, I need to bring that up Ma- now. That's what McDonald's <laughs> calls their taxes, bro. That guy's actually like he went kind of crazy now. Have you ever heard Call about him? McAfee. Mr. Yeah. McAfee. Yeah, McAfee. John McAfee. McAfee. He's like kind of crazy. What happened? Yeah, he's he like he got a he got uh, a virus. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I got COVID, bro. That guy's got something, man. I read so I watched some like Vice documentary about him, and they were interviewing all the girls that he takes to his, I guess, his private island or whatever. We're talking about and Epstein or <laughs> no McAfee? Oh, okay, no, all the billionaires have private That's islands. Like, oh, yeah, they all. Yeah, oh, once you shit. once you hit the top, you just get your own island. You do whatever bro, you want. Apparently, bro. this guy has like super orgies at, on his little island. Whoa, super, he's super weird. Yeah. What is this? I mean, what you else know, do you do on a private island? It, it, I know why. <laughs> why else have a private island? Well, uh, like what? What? What in the world is a super orgy? It's like, you, isn't you, an orgy already <laughs> a, like a large group of people that are having a good old time? No, nah, super is fifteen plus. <laughs> no, su- a super yeah. orgy is like World War Z when they're climbing the wall. <laughs> 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 They're just falling off of each other trying to get to the top, bro. Everybody oh, want to ride. Slipping on everybody. <laughs> everybody. Oh, bro. Don't say that. Come don't on, bro. That. Don't say that, bro. <laughs> it's, it's freaking like a... Yeah, anyway. Yeah, that guy's crazy, man. He was... I guess the first time... The last time that I saw him that I really looked into him was when, like, Bitcoin was doing well. And he was just like, oh, man, this is going to be the future. I put like all my money into this stuff and yeah then i watched this documentary about him and how he was just so super weird and i was like yeah i'm not gonna put too much on this <laughs> right shit but, but i, I mean do honestly the, listen. The, the stuff that he does the stuff that he did like we um use in our everyday life like even the um the like trojan and virus uh software that he that he made like now it's in everything like you can't mm-hmm. go anywhere without it. Even on your PayPal, I think it has some like um, McAfee symbol on it or something. Bro, I can't. I can't hear it. McAfee, it's messing me up. Well, I know he <laughs> sold that company a long time ago, but I heard somewhere yeah. I used to know this dude that worked in IT at some like company in San Antonio, some tech company, and that was based out of San Antonio. And he said something about how a lot of those like. Um, what do you call them? I guess like vi- like virus companies or, or like antivirus companies actually work together with the people that are developing the viruses to like always have something that you need to where like if you're they're actually working in tandem creating viruses and fixing them so that you always need each other's products. Mm. Yeah. Basically, kind of- all these viruses are is just finding loopholes in your software. So like with Windows, since it's so open and so uh, like. You know, they don't have a bunch of restrictions. There's a bunch of like loopholes where like if you log in as this certain user and then go to this folder and then you like make it turn off or turn on, like you can get somebody's passcode or something. And basically that's all they're doing is just finding the loopholes and then giving them to people. That's why they have those like hackathons because they want they want people to find the loopholes for them. They pay pay people to find the bugs and stuff. That'd be a dope job. Just pay, yeah. paid to hack some crazy security systems or some like yeah. major like financial servers and whatever. Yeah. 100%. Even like taking that to like the different level. I was always thinking every time I'd watch cops, I'd be like, man, it would be so freaking cool if there was something I can set up to where I got to like, you know, simulate robbing a bank and then having to run away from the cops and having them chase me, like doing like a car chase or like it's running GTA, from them bro. and trying to hide from them. Yeah. Like in real life. That'd be Bro. super dope. If we had something like the purge, but murder was still illegal, I think we'd be onto something. 
<laughs> just, <laughs> just John would love that because he John would, would love. It. <laughs> he would John wreck would... shit in the forty-eight hours where everyone else was frozen. So, and as we know, I would just be tickling people. So I wouldn't get much. <laughs> I wouldn't get much out of this one, but. <laughs> Bro, your quotes are undefeated. <laughs> Bro, I don't even remember what we're talking about. I see those and I'm like, fuck, what? <laughs> what did I say? Why would I ever say that? Because <laughs> there's no context and it's wild yeah. shit. That's honestly that's what best. we should start calling them. Out of context quotes. Hey, yo. That's, that's good. Anything that's out good. of context is really good. I think everyone kind of does this, especially when you're watching like movies. You always kind of imagine yourself in the scenario of usually not even just like the hero of the movie. It's always just like, what if I was the crazy dude in the movie and like all this <laughs> stuff was happening in your life? Like I always thought, I always thought I would do that. Uh, you know words? I would mm -hmm. do that with uh, Italian job. I was just gonna say baby driver. <laughs> baby, yeah, baby driver. Yeah, like oh, I think a lot of those like you know like heist movies and whatever like mm -hmm. italian job there's no good guy like the bad guys steal from the bad guys so you're just rooting for the bad guys that the other bad guys are stealing from and it's like everyone kind of loses but you're like dude i wonder what it would be like to just have 35 million dollars in gold and like figure it out and we're also in the middle of ozarks right now so we just started season three which is phenomenal really phenomenal good. show really good show and i think season three was nominated for like 15 emmys right something like that damn and a grammy yeah, yeah, fifteen Grammys, I think. Uh, I think twelve Dove Awards, <laughs> um, <laughs> a couple Sundance Awards, a, a couple slime, <laughs> slime Awards as well. Yeah, bro, I think MTV's uh, hottest music video, um, yeah. Teen Choice. Got, yeah. <laughs> yeah, bro, they they, they freaking they freaking jump on them all, bro. They freaking <laughs> they freaking sweeping, man. No, but it is a legitimately fantastic show, just great quality. But it's all about. I mean, there's no spoiler because it's like first ten minutes. You know this. It's about money money laundering. Yeah. So you know, I'm, I'm always, and it's kind of funny in the show because they explain everything. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, they literally tell you how to launder money. And you're just like, oh. Yeah, that kind of makes <laughs> like sense. Like your brain scans like, hmm, that doesn't seem too bad. So if I just, <laughs> right? just get a shell corp and whatever, like I'll be fine. <laughs> right. I did see a tweet where the, one of the executives at Google Stadia, which is like their cloud gaming platform, says that gaming is not far off from being able to like, basically adapt to new situations like in the game like mm. have you ever seen westworld no the premise of westworld is they basically create a theme park that has like an old western feel to it and there's a bunch of hosts scattered around the theme park which are robots but they look and function and act exactly like humans so you can go into westworld do whatever you want include kill people like literally anything and it's all just like adapting as time goes on it's like one huge simulation yeah yo but he said that gaming is not far off from a westworld type scenario not not with like real life hosts but like sure. inside gaming new situations and npcs will be able to react to situations like uniquely like nothing it's not it doesn't have to be programmed in it's not so, to go right back to the script kind of or something exactly right That's now wild. everything's scripted you know but that will be insane. So all of our urges to want to be in movies and do crazy shit, we'll be able to hopefully do inside these games, which we already do to, to some can extent. Get that itch out a little bit. I mean, it's the reason we yeah. love playing GTA and games. Before like that. we freaking see on the news, you know, young man from San Antonio robs local bank. <laughs> <laughs> this is just John hightailing ass out of the freaking Jefferson <laughs> Bank. In the interview, he's gonna say, "I thought everyone else was frozen." <laughs> I thought this was a game, bro. Yo, it's like, I can't distinct reality. Like, jeez, John, come on, bro. I'm just going to claim I'm blind. How do you guys feel about, like, Ready Player One? You, you've both seen that, right? It's a, it's a great movie. Have you seen it, John? Yeah, I saw it. I think I saw it with y'all. Do you think we'll get to a point where most of our lives are basically inside a virtual world instead of, like, in reality? I'll say I'll say this. When I look at my uh, screen report on my phone, I say, "Boy, we there." <laughs> I said, I, said I'm I, there, baby. I, I spend the majority of my time that's in another hilarious. world. No, like I some. I mean, I I mean, I do a lot of work for my phone, so that's one thing. But no, I mean, I think right now there's like a move. There's like a trendiness to like not being on social media 
I think, you know, shows like The Social Dilemma and like people really that are fighting like this world of like, I'm, I can make more money. I'm more connected to people through this device. But at the same time, I'm distracted from making money and disconnected from people all at this all simultaneously. And it's kind of a, a weird world. I think we'll find out which direction we go within the next like two to three years. Yeah. I'm I'm going to assume we move toward technology because I just feel like as a race we want to progress and that means things happen faster, they happen more efficiently, and that's gonna come through technology. Mm -hmm. So I mean I, I don't see us like going back to freaking, you know, wood huts and stuff like that because we just want to be more connected to nature. I think we try to find a hybrid. Yeah, I think it will always be a hybrid. We'll start to combine the two worlds more and more, especially with AR glasses and stuff coming out like that where Yeah. There will be able to be technology incorporated into the the real world. I think more and more we'll realize the value of both and where it's valuable. Like like there obviously is some value to social media, and then there's a lot of detriments that are attached to it as well. So if you can understand over time, I'm only going to use social media for this because this is this is where I find it valuable. And you also see the value in nature and the value to you know a clean environment and you know protecting the world that you're in. Like I think the more that we understand the value of each of those things, the more we'll be able to hybridize them. But right now yeah. it's very disconnected. You got people that don't give a shit about the environment. You got people that all they care about is technology. All they want to do is game. And you know it's kind of a weird um, like split right now. I think mm -hmm. I think we'll I think we'll find a balance eventually. Yeah. Have y'all seen Elysium? Mm -mm. It's a. It's basically no. a movie where like all the rich people go from Earth and they go to this kind of oh. revolving. Yes, I did. I did. See yeah, that. it's with Matt Damon. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody like that. But all these rich people are, are um, they're above Earth, and they're um, what did I say? Revolving, not mm -hmm. revolving, orbiting yeah. um, on this kind of like spaceship. But it's basically like a little Earth, mm. and. Um, I think it'll almost be something like that to where um, only a few group of people that can, um, I guess, afford to kind of have their whole life in a virtual place will actually have that access because we're still going to have those people that don't even have electricity. Like, I'm just saying there's going to be this huge mm -hmm. polarization between somebody who will be able to get that and somebody who won't. Um, but I think it's going to take us a long time to get there because... I mean, you think about it, we had these like movies where there was like flying cars and like mm -hmm. time travel by 2012 or whatever. Um, I don't know if y'all ever saw the, the Jetsons, that cartoon, mm -hmm. but I just looked it up and it was, it was based in 2062, which is um, like 40 years away, right? Mm -hmm. So we have 40 years to come up with a floating car or um, <laughs> I mean, a flying car yep. and be able to live in, Earth, um, in uh, outer space. But um, I think that's going to be a long, like, I think we'll, we'll kind of try to get those things first since we already have people, uh, those ideas in people's heads. Yeah. And then we'll kind of go on to that, like, you know, living in virtual um, yeah. places. Also, do y'all remember like when people would try say they were going to freeze themselves and then mm -hmm. come back when like reincarnate, like those people that are like, what are they, what is it called? Um, like cryo, cryogenics, right? Yeah. Like yeah. they would freeze themselves with cr like cryo, whatever. Um, those people are still waiting <laughs> for those things. So <laughs> I don't know, like there's all these things that are, people are focusing on and, yeah. you know, if we all focused on, uh, doing a, a virtual world, I bet we would get there pretty fast, but everybody's just everywhere. Like everybody well, I, wants something different. And right now, since we're talking about it, like we want it, but yeah, it's going to be a long journey. Yeah. It'll, it'll be interesting. I feel like COVID has kind of amped that up a little say. bit people are like oh I, for for one this is this will sound dark but like i don't like the world around me <laughs> kind of a thing <laughs> we're like especially through the political seasons and through covid or you know most of 2020 has been those things i think people more and more are kind of like you know what i don't i don't mind not seeing my family i, I, I don't <laughs> mind you know sitting in my room all day like this is and then within that kind of like we've talked about before saying like okay let's go for walks Let's go camping. Let's like, you kind of like isolate these incidents where like you understand you need some community and you need some nature and whatever else you need exposure. But at the same time, I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, man, I mean, I'll lean into whatever I can get done here. I mean, if myself as a personal trainer where my entire job is personal or even in music, like producing for other people where normally I'd have them come in and sing, I'm finding ways 
to personal train online or through Zoom or through whatever. I'm finding ways to have people that have microphones send me their raw vocal files so that I can just produce it from the comfort of my home and not have to interact with anyone. It's kind of like a weird world, but I think more and more people are like, hmm, I, I kind of like myself, kind of like being with myself more than you crazy people out there. Not only that, but there's actually companies that started during this pandemic to yeah. make office work virtual. So it literally, they're creating like, it looks like a video game. And then they, companies pay them to use their service where you actually, it simulates a real office environment. Dang. So there will be meeting rooms and then desks and whatever else where you are literally have your little avatar and you're in the <laughs> office with the, all your coworkers for like your real job though. Like this isn't a Yo. game. And when you have meetings, you go to the meeting room and you can only hear the people in the room so it's like simulates a real work Bro. environment and they're finding that like productivity is just as high like everything still functions damn near the same oh yeah it's just all virtual bro i so there's a, a fitness device that just came out probably like last year by now because this, this year's bunk combine so fast michael yeah it was probably like a year or two ago but it's called tonal and it's this big flat screen on your wall and it has these two like mechanical handles, like cable handles almost that, that come down. And it's actually, it uses magnets to set your weight. And what's crazy about this thing is it'll set workouts for you. And you'll put in, hey, I want to do a set of 12 reps on this like cable bench press. And because it's all magnetic and it's a super smart like AI system, if you start to fail in your repetition, it'll literally spot Ooh. you through the cable bro so That's it'll be awesome. like it'll it'll like slightly lighten the load and try to let you finish the rep and like help you out and it's like dude the world is the world is changing quick i don't think we'll realize how quick what happens though is that a machine like that for like a random little cable system is like three grand or something like that so no one's yeah. not that many people are going to get mm -hmm. it but in five years it'll be exactly. in every household there will be gold's gyms that just have 10 of them on a wall that everyone can have access to you know like there'll be whole studios made for it same with like that office stuff it's like right now maybe it's a huge investment for companies to make that jump and to just trust the process but in a few years man i mean it's, it's gonna be wild to see what happens yeah i think i think this is like that kind of shift that was almost happening I don't know, a couple of years ago where truck drivers are getting mad because Tesla was coming out with an uh, auto driving car. Right. But it's like, that's kind of like where it's going. And honestly, like if these things do come out and they do, you know, start doing well, I mean, what about personal trainers? Like th that's the personal trainer right there. And that's going to, that's going to take out a few people's jobs. I mean, mm -hmm. if you even think about if you're having a, you know, a virtual meeting, you don't have to have a janitor, you don't have to have, you know, facilities, people at a building or somebody, yeah. you know, the, the roads aren't going to be used as much. So all these jobs are just going to get taken out by technology and like, where are these people going to go or what are they going to do? Yeah. 100%. I think, and we heard Andrew Yang talk a lot about this with like a UBI or something like that. I think he's a little early. I, I like, just in my personal opinion, I don't know if it's like, time for that i think it would just cost so much now to do that but i do i do think eventually we will need something like that because there has to be and i think they're always i mean this happened in the industrial revolution where there was there was riots and it was crazy because everyone lost their job and then all of a sudden people found jobs and they yeah, learned new you crafts kind of adapt. And you, yeah you, you mm -hmm. I, this always happens i mean imagine Imagine the cavemen in Venezuela just sucking on peppers, and <laughs> all the all the all the sudden yo, they got it. Yo, some fact dude, check that. Some some dude made fact. a wheel. Some some bastard down the road made a wheel, and he's like, "Bro, do you mean I gotta stop sucking peppers and make wheels now?" You know what I'm saying? So horrible so, analogy. Horrible. So you know, like honestly, pretty brilliant. But I think we will as a race. We've that's one thing we do well is adapt. Not, not very many other creatures adapt as well as the human creature does. It's one thing we do really well. So uh, maybe eventually, if literally everything is AI and robots and whatever, but someone's going to have to maintain them. Someone's going to have to charge and move and create, and there's going to be manufacturing. And anytime there's manufacturing to make these things and develop the software, there's going to be jobs that are attached to that, that are, that are lower income, that are, you know, maybe don't take as high of a skill set or as much training and stuff like that. So I think it'll always exist no matter what the market is. Boom. You're going to need engineers, baby. Hell yeah. And if you don't want them all to be fat, you're going to need me. 
You're gonna need personal trainers, baby. Or or tonal, maybe. I don't know. Tonal. Oh shit. Fuck. Tonal. God damn it. <laughs> shit. Shit. Hey, uh, hey, Yo, McAfee. Can, can I borrow you so I can yeah, uh, make, create a virus yeah. for this tonal thing? Yeah, McAfee, block fucking tonal. <laughs> McAfee. <laughs> Just using it like Siri, like, hey, McAfee. <laughs> Shut him down, bitch. <laughs> Um, another industry, though, that is having to really adapt and change in their ways is the movie industry, obviously. Um, oh. Wonder Woman decided that they're going to debut both in theaters and on HBO Max on the same day. So Wonder Woman is a Warner Brothers movie. Warner Brothers also owns HBO Max, from my understanding. So it's almost like they're using Wonder Woman because of the situation as like a massive marketing <laughs> tactic for like HBO Max, you know. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be interesting. Would you do you guys picture yourselves going to the movies to see this or just watching it at home yeah. on HBO? I, I just want to go see a movie at the movies. Me too. I miss the movies. Well, we can. Bad. We can. I still, you know, bro, I was always kind of weary of going to the movie cuz they're so dirty. Now, <laughs> it's like obviously they have to take certain precautions. But, like, I still, like, just don't trust it that much. I'm like, nah, you don't know what you're doing. You're probably right. using yeah. Windex on your seats. Hey, that stuff's got ammonia, baby. Yo, Bro, you ever seen it. my big fat Greek wedding? <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was... I'll take care of all kinds of shit. <laughs> Works on everything. Yeah, I, I think what we get to is a place where we have 20 different streaming services for all the different kinds of shows and movies and platforms and companies that you like. And on those platforms, there will be a month premiere that everyone can see the movie for 20 bucks or whatever like that. You can stream it for your you know, family. After that month, it goes to the service itself. You saw that with Mulan. You saw that with, you know, I've, I've seen a couple other movies they're doing it with. Um, there's another one I know that's coming to Disney Plus soon called Soul that was going to be a big theater hit, but it's going to go straight to Disney Plus. And, you know, yeah. I think we're going to see a lot more of that. I, I think what happens is. 95% of the theater business dies. The only part that doesn't is the high end, high experience stuff. Some of the smaller theaters with the D box seats and the meals, I feel like maybe those survive because at a higher price point for a lower margin, they, they will do okay. But this random Regals and like the freaking East Side Santicos, I just don't see them staying open, man. This, they were all, I remember. Years before COVID, they were talking about closing movie theaters, and half of them were turning into dollar theaters, and then they were $4 theaters because they had to make money. <laughs> it's like, it, it was already a dying industry. Now, I just, I just don't see it recovering. True. Yeah. I don't I, know, um, man. They, like, 2019 was a really good year for movies, still. Even though, you know, a lot of people have the idea that they're going downhill, but if there's enough mm -hmm. big blockbuster movies being made, I think the incentive's still there, and like people still enjoy that movie going experience, yeah, but it's, it's I think true. Warner Brothers is in the perfect position to experiment with this because they kind of have everything to gain like they already spent two hundred million on this movie, and because of the situation, they'll never have the box office success that they want to have during this time, yeah. so just throw it on h b o Max and get more subscribers over there, see how it performs to know like you know how to move forward. Yeah. with other movies and it'll be really interesting my understanding is that it's going to be free if you have hbo max there's no additional charge to to watch it so as long as you have the service uh on christmas day you'll be able to watch it at home yeah that's so. I, I feel like um part of the <clears throat> part of the experience of going to the to the movies was like you knew that you weren't going to get the kind of uh, movie that you would get on like a, a streaming service, right? Like yeah. the producers would put a lot of money into these movies because that's where they were going to make most of their money. You know, these one-time watchers when you go to watch them at your Santicos or whatever. Uh, I wonder if that is going to, you know, kind of bring down the amount of money that producers are going to be spending on these movies and maybe bring down the quality. The Maybe the actors aren't going to be as good. Like mm -hmm. what is yeah. this going to do to movies in the long run? Well, I, I, was, I was talking to someone about that, like, I don't know, a few months ago. And it's kind of interesting because now a lot of movies are all filmed in, like, 
8K or at the very least 4K. Or they're they're filmed at like eight, even up to like 12K, like ridiculous, ridiculous, you know, precision and whatever, you know, color accuracy and stuff like that. And I think it's because you look at the PS5, you look at the Xbox Series X, you look at any TV that's come out over the last three, four years. They're all 4K plus, you know, even like the monitors, your computers, your phones have OLEDs now. Like there's so many things that are going on where screen quality's improved a lot, but you're not really seeing that as much in theaters, except for maybe some newer ones. And I know they're trying to update some systems, but you're not going to see some 8K theater anytime soon with that's backlit or something like that. It's just too much. And so I, I feel like they, you see producers still focusing on quality because they know they can make some money through the streaming services. And people are always going to have a device at that resolution, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I, right now there's just a lot of there's a lot of opportunity, and a lot of gain that can happen right now. I mean, you can get these movies out to a lot of people. Right. Um, people that are already subscribed to these things are going to watch these movies because they're already there. Yeah. And maybe people that haven't watched these before, um, and then you're going to get people that are going to watch them because they want to watch this movie. Um, but then, like, you, you also have these opportunities about the times that are going on right now. Like, there's a pandemic right now. You can make a beautiful horror film or, you know, pandemic, uh, end-of-the-world film beautiful. based on the times that are happening right now. Like, people would yeah. go crazy about that. I mean, it would probably wreak a lot of havoc <laughs> in the real world, but the movie, would I think, would do really well. Yeah. Well, you saw like on net. I remember I kind of cracked up at it because like after like a few weeks of quarantine, all of a sudden every trending movie or like suggested movie on Netflix was literally like called Pandemic or like The Last Virus or like all yeah. of these things like about even in the app store with games like the there's a game called uh, Outbreak or yeah or there's a show called Outbreak I think no uh Bubble what Breaker it? whatever it's like a game that literally. <laughs> revolves around a virus spreading around the world and you have to try to yeah. contain it and it was like it's number like a, one in the app store <laughs> <it's hilarious. laughs> people are like i'll beat the virus from my phone let me learn yeah they want to learn a little bit more about what they could do that's hilarious shoot lasers at yeah. it it'll work until until actors start or till movies actually have actors that are wearing masks i'm not going to believe what's happening in the movie like that's not real life to dude me. Has, yeah. has this been happening to you guys though when you watch a movie or a show where it's like a crowded <laughs> area and you're like, Yo. where the hell are their masks? I like, I like get <laughs> yeah. anxiety, and I'm like, bro, we were watching a show just from like some like random cooking show from like last year. And I was like, this is so <laughs> recent. They're talking about like 2019, and like, of course, like none of them were. They're not doing anything. There's no bubble. They're not talking about anything, and it was just weird. I was just like kind of confused. Just like they hugged. Yeah. They, he tasted their food. I'm a little confused. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like who Absolutely. does that? Who does that? Who shares food nowadays? Yeah, like Freeze. it makes you second guess. Like, there's so many things that we just are not comfortable doing anymore. You know, Bro. it's weird. Even like meeting new people, I'm like, do I shake this dude's hand? Like, yeah. I don't really know what's going on. Are you on. okay? Are you okay? Where you been? Like, you just kind of like tell me about your family. <laughs> give a little head nod. <laughs> All right. What's up, bro? Like, yo, like, you understand? You got that? No. You got that Mickey fee? You got that that antivirus? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you got that Mickey fee, bro? <laughs> Like, yo, where you been in like, the past uh, week? Yo. So who is it? It's Wonder Woman, right? That they're coming out with the movie? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So who do you think would win between Captain Marvel and Wonder Woman? I think Captain Marvel, right? Captain Marvel's like the She's Superman. like Superman, yeah. She got like laser beams coming out of her eyes and shit. And she can fly. Shit. She's Damn. technically the strongest one, right? Out of like everyone in Marvel. Technically, I mean. How do y'all, yeah. yeah. How do y'all feel about that being a... Uh, a girl. Do y'all feel any type of way about that? I'm all for equality, bro. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, we're all for equality, but I mean, does that... John's like, so how does that really make y'all feel? <laughs> John's like, just admit that you'll fucking like John, it. John, John's like, anyone else feel uneasy about this? <laughs> <laughs> no, I think it's cool, bro. I don't think there's enough female representation in these uh, superhero yeah. movies. Yeah. No, I man. heard they're coming out with a, a like Mike, but it's like a, a, a WNBA star. <laughs> <laughs> oh, did you make that up? I wasn't trying to get no. any jokes out of this. <laughs> Yo, that's a lie. They would never do that. Uh, dude, I'm sorry, but like WNBA just doesn't sell. Like, and it's not even like a. I, 
it's just like I love watching uh, like women's <laughs> soccer. So I think it more has to do yes. with the sport. Like well, I just for don't because the U.S. actually wins in that. That's fine. yeah. I mean, they are very good. That that probably does make a difference. But for uh, sure. I don't know. I think it's more has to, more so has to do with the sport. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. Let's, I've never, let's, gonna, let's I haven't dive thought, into this. Let's I haven't dive, thought much about this because because look, there was a. Um, <laughs> They said that I, I didn't think Captain Marvel did as well, like in the box office, as you know, like Iron Man or something like that. And Iron Man why. isn't the isn't the you know most powerful. <laughs> All right, go ahead, superhero. <laughs> She's like, let me still, let me tell you why. He's my brother. No, let me sister. tell you why, Le- dear, dear dear family. So, <laughs> no, actually, I don't have like a whole bunch to say to that. But honestly, probably because just Wonder Woman is better looking, low key. That's probably why she did better. No, I'm saying that they Captain didn't Marvel? do very... Yeah, most likely. Oh, oh, okay. How did they compare? I don't... Let me do some research on sports. <laughs> Just a quick, so quick research. <laughs> no, actually, I, I don't know. Did, I, did, I didn't even know that they did a lot better or worse. I thought... I'm um, actually one... very attracted to... Uh, what's her name? Captain Marvel with uh, Brie. Help me out. Yeah, yeah, um, there you go. Brie Larson. Brie, uh... Yes, there we go. <laughs> Just kidding. Is that her yeah, name? No, no, it literally is Brie Larson. Yeah, she's, she's rather Oh, attractive. hell yeah. Equality, baby. Right, <laughs> I, know, I know a woman. I got tons of women friends. All right, yo, Captain Marvel did $1.18 billion in the oh box. Oh, my God. Office. So I think it did pretty damn well. I don't know how that Wait, compares woman to uh, Iron Man. Find out. Oh, Iron Man. Well, you're comparing her to Iron Man? I'm saying, like, she's, not, she's the most powerful, you know, in the Marvel Universe. You know, you'd expect her to do the best, right? Yeah. Compared to like Iron Man. But do people always want Thor. to see the all powerful Thor's a great movie. Um <laughs> the all the all powerful person win? Or do they want to see like with Iron Man, he was kind of the jackass billionaire who got thrown on his ass well, in the middle of the desert and came back. You know, like kind of and he's like a quirky personality. And like I'd funny. argue that Iron Man is the more recognizable name. For sure. Like Captain Marvel, I never saw Captain Marvel. That's I'd never even heard that name like before yeah. the movie. I didn't even came know out. that was a thing. So yeah, it's just Captain Marvel's not one of the ones you you would hear about like growing up and stuff. Yeah. Like even comics and stuff like that, unless you were really into it. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, who knows, man? I also don't yeah. think like the Captain Marvel movie wasn't that good to me. That might yeah. have something to do with. It. <laughs> The actual movie just wasn't that good. I was gonna say, and also the movie sucked a little bit. So yeah, nah. I mean, yeah, I, know, I actually never saw it. I just saw. I'm only, her. Yeah, I'm only asking because. Um, are you sexist? Yeah, I don't watch. Yeah, that. yeah I don't watch. I don't watch why. movies with female lead roles. <laughs> <laughs> wonder. I wonder. I wonder. I remember Wonder Woman broke like records though for all superhero yeah. movies. Well, what's it? Uh, yeah, Wonder Woman did what well. Her, what was her box office? That was a huge movie. Because that was like the, f- not the first, I won't say that, because obviously Wonder Woman, the character has been around for a while and she had shows and movies and stuff. But the, I, I remember that being a mass, it was like such a like female empowerment, like huge, huge hit. I remember people talking about it for a while. I never really heard anyone talk about Captain Marvel. They would just ask if I'd seen it within, you know, I don't know, the timeline of the Marvel series. But Wonder Woman like blew According up. According to Wikipedia, it did 821 million. Dang, really? That's because it's DC, bro. That is true. That's, DC doesn't get the, the hype, that the clout that uh, Marvel does, I don't feel. Unless you're going to put Christopher Nolan and Christian Bale in there, then maybe they'll get some shit done. But the other movies, I just don't feel like. Like, I saw the Batman vs. Superman. The Superman movie was good, but the Batman vs. Superman and the other Batmans, they, I, I did not like them. Yeah, I agree. Even, DC's, even always, a, DC's always hit or miss. Even uh, Aquaman, as much as I love Cal Drogo and relate to him. <laughs> It wasn't. What, what's How do you relate to him? I mean, you I mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, I mean, what? like precisely, like I, I don't know what you're asking. I'm just really. like no, his golden skin matches I your mean, golden skin. I don't really see his locks the when he had locks. I mean, you haven't you haven't heard me talk. Uh, I mean, can you not see me right now? If you can say one <laughs> sentence in Dothraki, oh. what is it? <laughs> I, I said, fuck you, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that is a... 
<laughs> that is stupid. a quote with no context needed. <laughs> Bro, okay, so Yo, time. I'm gonna have one quote that's just <laughs> fictional Dothraki. Bro, it's just gonna be. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm gonna have a fun time trying to spell that shit. Yo, bro, you have to slow that down. <laughs> Translation. Oh, uh, bro, what's crazy is Dothraki is like a real ass language. Like, bro, Loki, you can like learn it on Duolingo. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, you can. Oh, which which one can you learn on there? You're you lying. Can learn... There's no, some I'm Star not... Wars languages bro, that I'm people not lying. like know fluently. Oh, it's oh weird. for sure, for sure. No, on Duolingo, you can learn one of the Game of Thrones langu languages. I don't know what's the other one. What's the other <laughs> language? Wait, that's oh, a Game of Valerian? Thrones thing. Dothraki, yeah. That's like the you... uh, that's the desert people. That's like ah. a that's like a, um, a a movie lyric that you learned. Yeah, you've had to go back to that one and be like, uh, "Got to start." Yeah. Ah, shit! Nah, got to start just, over again. He made that uh, up, but it just sounded like Papa. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that, that was good. That was pretty good. That was pretty good. Actually, it is good. Like it was believable. It means uh, it means you are my my moon and my stars. Oh girl. shit! Yeah. Uh -huh. that, meet, meet me in the back of that cave at about noon o'clock. Noon o'clock. <laughs> Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Meet me when that sun hits about 40 degrees, girl. <laughs> I don't know. Nah, just, just, yeah, just, no. Just, cut, cut. Just, just drop the bombs. Drop the bombs. Next. Cut. Cut. Next. Cut. Cut. She's next. <laughs> oh, we don't have a next. Uh, yeah, someone, someone say something. Did y'all ever see Ocean's 8? Nah. Speaking Again, I, I, I try not to watch. Movies. I try not to watch too many. <laughs> Um, I did see wow, which one is the eight? I saw the one with like all the, you know, uh, like the original. Ooh, Ocean, Ocean's, Ocean's, Ocean's eleven. The... Yeah, I think I saw. Ocean's 11. eight is the one with all the women. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't, I started watching yeah. that and I got a little bored. It's not a sex oh, thing. Why? I why, just, bro? It didn't quite match the quality of Ocean's Eleven. <laughs> oh. Is what I'm saying. Why would you? Wow. Why would you say that is? <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> it was more of a direct. Is it because it wasn't George Clooney, Brad Pitt, <laughs> Brad Paisley, like Matt everyone? Damon. Brad Pitt. <laughs> it was more of a um, production problem and a directing problem. It just the who's the director didn't have the substance you, that I was. You looking got for out of that check. really nicely. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, I mean it's just I'm speaking facts because at, at the end of the day I, I would rather see women in movies because I prefer to look at them. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, that's you'd rather can't, see can't what their relate. acting qualities qualities uh, pertain or what they well what qualities I, pr they I prefer to see a, chisel a chiseled man in my it's movies. a combination of things like you know I love I like seeing a good looking handsome man as well of course not in a weird True way man. but like of course I know what I'm coming man's soon handsome. boys don't you worry <laughs> 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 what are you talking about <laughs> coming soon bro <laughs> what is coming, coming soon, soon bro is there a movie coming out <laughs> hey, you'll find out have y'all seen that like meme and it's like these horses come running out of their uh, trailer and it's just like huge brown majestic horse running out and then this is like this miniature like dark looking horse and it's like the rock and then uh <laughs> kevin, kevin hart, hart. <laughs> <laughs> i haven't but it sounds funny already that does sound funny i like that i like oh, that oh man um, um in other news bitcoin's above 18k anybody cashing mm -hmm. in on that mm -hmm. Hell nah. <laughs> I bought it. Yo, I have, I have some that I bought like two over two years ago that just has 17. been kind of sitting there, so that's kind of cool. That's a, that was a pretty good time. Well, you've probably up, what, 40%? And then at the time, no, well, so I originally mm -hmm. bought in 2017 <laughs> when it was yeah. like a crypto craze, right? When people uh, yeah. weren't only buying Bitcoin, but there was like Litecoin, Ethereum. I mean, and those right. still exist, but there right. was a bunch of other ones that people were excited about. So I had bought uh, a lot of different ones that I had looked into and like, and uh, sometime, I think last year when Bitcoin price was really low, like not doing well, I decided to sell all my other coins and just transfer it all to Bitcoin. So I did yeah. get some at a really good price. So now it is nice. actually up there, well, there we go. which is exciting. When'd you buy it at? Or what price? Uh, I want to say it was like. Around ten at the time, and now it's at eighteen. Oh, nice. Hey, nice, nice. Yeah, I just hey. recently bought some at fifteen six, mm -hmm. and it's like eighteen something right now. Damn. So you're gonna sell yeah, off? That's doing pretty good. I wait. I think it'll get to twenty this time. If yeah. I already have my point set, if it gets to, if it gets to nineteen five, I'm selling out, 
And um, if it goes anywhere above that, I'm going to buy just a little more and then put another point, 19.5. And if it goes to 19.5, I'm just selling it. Because yeah. I, I, it's just too volatile. Like this whole week, it's just know, been dude. 16, 15 and a half, 17, 16 and a half. Like it's just going, yeah. it's going up for sure over, it, over the period of time. And it goes up massive amounts too, like up and down. Yeah. It's not like it's dude, like, it's oh. It's more volatile than any like stock. It's, it's like wild, crazy. Dude. It'll go if up you, thousands of dollars and down thousands yeah. of dollars. It's unreal. The, um, the crazy thing is it's 24 hours. So, I mean, these things can drop overnight you yeah. know from 19 to 16 and you'll be like what the hell like i just lost you know however much money overnight and you don't even know about it like that's the worst thing yeah like the regular stock market you could just watch it you know during the day and you can uh you know monitor After hours it or something, or something, something bad or, yeah. yeah yeah i had bought in a i never got bitcoin i had bought in at with some litecoin and one mm -hmm. other dogecoin because it was like super super cheap and you can just get like 30,000 of them and it's like 10 bucks or something but the fluctuation it could be like 0. 0.0002 and then 0. 0.0004 and it would double in value even though it still didn't cost you anything and so I kept just like flipping stuff yeah. and I had I had Litecoin that did really well like I don't know like a year ago something like that I think I, I sold it for like about double what I put into it I, didn't, I, I don't trade a bunch in crypto just because I know how insecure it is insecure or whatever but mm -hmm. It's very insecure. It's very insecure. Very unstable. <laughs> very unstable emotionally. Unstable. Like I, I bought it originally with the intention of just holding it for dear life. Basically, holding yeah, on for, holding yeah. on for dear life. Like, <laughs> so it was money I didn't really need, and I just wanted to see what happens. But so I will continue, even if it goes high, I will sell some. Yeah. But I will always have some, just because I don't know where it's gonna go, and I think yeah. I, from what I've learned about it there's a really passionate community around it. Not only of people who are in it for the money, but people who are like developers who are in it to like yeah. continue to make it grow and actually make it like a, a, a utility, you know? Yeah. So I think it has a bright future. So I will never get rid of all of it. Yeah. It's just yeah. what I think. If there, was, if there was a good solid way that I could pay for things with that, I would definitely use that. Cause I mean, it's, there's there's no paper trail. You can basically do whatever you want with it, and nobody would know what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, unless they know your address. Shit. Yeah, but can't you now on like uh, PayPal and Cash App? You can buy it, but I don't know. I haven't looked into how you can it. Uh, use it. I know yeah. that people primarily use it. Like there is a big market for like buying and trading yeah. uh, usernames on social media platforms. Yeah, and. Uh, that's primarily the method of choice that they use for payment. <laughs> Wouldn't so, it be kind of interesting if you like, let's say I bought a car from someone for $20,000 in Bitcoin and I give it to them. Next day, market drops and it's worth like 12K. <laughs> it's funny that you say does he, that, buddy. Does, does he kind of get effed over? <laughs> like, yeah, yes. basically. There was, a, there was a guy in California who I guess made a bunch of money in Bitcoin and he went and bought a Lamborghini because it was the only, he, I don't know which car dealership it was, but they were the only ones who would take Bitcoin. He paid them in Bitcoin, took off of his Lamborghini and like, I mean, it was pretty close to where it was around 15 to 19,000. And then, you know, right after that, it was went down to like five like, or 6,000. Yeah, so plummeted. Yeah. He had a good, pretty good deal. Good, Dude, good there's, run. there's like a legendary story of back in, you know, when Bitcoin was first created. Um, someone who you just on the internet it really into that culture had a bunch of Bitcoin, and at the time it wasn't anything significant, right? So he used it to buy like a bunch of pizzas. <laughs> and if he would have held on to that, <laughs> yo, to this day it would be worth like millions of dollars or something crazy millions. like that. It's funny. Yeah, apparently, it's wild. apparently, the person who made Bitcoin or who like did the coding and stuff like that has at least half of it, and they don't know who the guy is. They don't like <laughs> Satoshi. Satoshi, Q yeah. They don't even know if that's a real person. Like they don't. It could be Nobody AI. Knows. And that, that's what's cool about it, is the guy created it not for himself, not for fame or anything. He created it because he believed in it. You know. Mm -hmm. So to this day. He's an, like nobody knows who created it, and I think that's pretty cool. It's yeah. literally was created as to be used. I think 
So there's dope. potential there, man. Hey. I think governments will do whatever they can to hinder it. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't have there, control. There was there are actually Bitcoin ATM machines where you can go put your money in, like put a twenty bucks in, and you can actually buy Bitcoin and put it on your you know, put it to your address and then you're kind of that money is off the like it's off it's off the books, I guess now. Mm-hmm. So you can completely go do whatever you want with it and That's it's just associated world. to your address, which is associated to pretty much nothing. Really? And there are actually I've I've read a bunch of stories where people are like, Yeah, I bought it back in two thousand ten or something when it was thirty cents and <laughs> Now, I bought a hundred dollars worth of it, which would have oh. been like millions now. But I don't know my address, and I can't, oh, I can't, re- re- yeah, get any of it back. Such yeah. sad stories. Yeah, like, what, if you, what if you move? Like what? Well, no, 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 no. So, so you're you're assigned, or you can you can you get like a an address, which is just a long chain of just a bunch Numbers of characters, and letters. A B C oh, okay. one two three whatever whatever, and. You can you can literally write it down, or you can put it on, you know, a hard, uh, or something. A hard yeah, somewhere yeah. that's secure. You don't want anybody to know that address. And so basically, how it works is, like this is this um, address you have is like your signature, and if somebody wants to send you something, they'll they'll take that package of you know data, they'll send it to you. You'll attach your signature it signature to it, then they'll scramble it up and they'll send it back. And then they'll decode it on their side. Um, and once they decode it, then they say, oh, okay, he accepted it. And so now that stuff will be associated to your name. It's, it's super confusing. I have to like look at it through pictures to understand mm-hmm. it. Yeah, right. But um, I guess it's anybody can have that address. Um, and you can get assigned as many addresses as you want. Um, but as long as you remember that address, you'll be good. That's crazy. All right, I looked into it. The first ever real world transaction of Bitcoin is 10 years old. And it's the story of buying two pizzas for 10,000 Bitcoins. <gasps> oh my God. <laughs> 10,000, bro? It That'd was be 18 in 2000, million, right? 180? In 2010, when the price of a Bitcoin was only a fraction of a cent. Oh my God. So, to the, like, this Damn. person was like, screw it. Like, this, I'm never going to use this. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That sucks. That's unreal. I mean, even like the, I don't know if you guys heard like, stocks right now, but um, the person who, who first bought Walmart stock, they didn't remember that they had bought Walmart. Or I guess they worked for Walmart and it had some program where you can buy stocks oh, yeah. through mm-hmm. your paycheck. And this person ended up leaving Walmart. They went somewhere else. They worked, you know, 30 years. They start retired. And they didn't when they retired. He didn't have any money. He was like, I'm, you know, completely broke. And he went to the social security office, and he was like, Hey, I need my social security. And they're like, We can't give this to you. You're literally a millionaire, or you know, you have all this money. <laughs> and like, he was what? like, What do you mean? He's like, No, this Walmart stock that you bought, you know, 30, 40 years ago is now worth millions. And he was like, What? Imagine. Bro. Imagine. I want to find that out someday. That would kind of suck, though, <laughs> because too. well, I mean. I- Depends when you find out, but like I would have rather yeah. been using that money. <laughs> oh true, yeah, true. You know what I'm saying? Imagine, like imagine the joy you've worked a whole life. Yeah, that would be nice. As you started at and you started at Walmart, and then you were a millionaire because of that job at Walmart. It's like Kanye getting stuck in the Gap. It's just like, hmm, hmm, interesting. I think companies do do that a lot, though. Like with their early employees. Yeah. When they don't have like a lot of capital, they give them like stock options. Yeah. That's dope. That is pretty dope. I used to work for Walmart and give me no goddamn stock options. (laughs) You're a little (laughs) little too late, buddy boy. Give me 825. (laughs) No benefits. Probably not even. I know, right? I don't remember. I'm all waiting for you to tell me how much you made at Walmart. (laughs) I don't remember. It was probably around Spill the tea. I was Probably pushing s- carts at Walmart for maybe eight bucks. No, not even eight bucks. I was going to say like seven fifty, probably. I, yeah, I moved. I moved to Sam's Club, and it was probably like eight bucks. Was like the big bucks. Like yeah. it was probably a good like seven at Walmart, and then like eight seventy five at cost or Sam's Club. I remember how now crazy like I thought it was. Bucks. 
when a friend of mine became a manager <clears throat> or like an assistant manager or something at assistant I think it was to the Bill, regional manager, assi- assistant to the regional manager at uh, <laughs> Bill Miller's, Bender Mifflin, and they were making like twelve bucks, and I was like, dude, no way, I'm no like, way, that's shit, that's bro. crazy, bro. I like. At the Why time, I was like <laughs> doing some little jobs for like seven bucks or something. I was like, hey, "That's crazy, bro!" It's crazy. And then it's-, it's crazy when you're growing up and you like don't realize what money is. Because then I heard like that, like some UPS drivers get like thirty two dollars an hour. I was like, "Fuck, no way!" That's just <laughs> he had like driver. that's an ob- now they do a sit in a car. It was like an obnoxious <laughs> amount of money at the time. And then, like, you grow up, and it's like, not that that's not a great amount of money now. It's still just like, oh, now I understand what that actually gets me in the real world. It yeah. feels totally different. But when you're a kid, if, it's, like, mind-blowing. If you think about, you know, if you break these things down, right? Like, I was talking about how, you know, right now we have, you know, people with older phones, and they're like, why don't you just get a new phone? And they're like, no, I don't want to spend, you know, 1200 bucks." And it's like, no, all you have to do is spend $50 a month. And they're like, oh, wait, I can do that. But then if you think about it on the other side, it's like, okay, every two weeks I get, you know, 500 bucks and you're like, oh, that's pretty good. But if you, then if you break that down you're like, no, you work one hour and I'll give you $10. And you're like, what the hell? I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. do something for an hour and only get right. $10. Bro, I yeah, saw this thing. Crazy. And this has nothing to do with the, the political ramifications of it, but there's this guy who was, he was pissed out. He was pissed off about like the tax plans and stuff. Cause he's a millionaire. And he was like, I, he's like, I don't want to spend 62% of my money or whatever. And he was like, imagine you go to this incredible job and he's like, okay, you're going to uh, work this entire year, but we're not going to start paying you till July. He's like, I want you to work from January till July or August for free. He was like, <laughs> hell oh, fuck. no. <laughs> you're, like, you're like, what the hell? It doesn't make any <laughs> sense. It's like all about how you word things, right? Right. It's like all like the way, yeah, the way you perceive Perspective. it. Exactly. What do they call that? They call that double speak. Double speak. Double speak. You're probably right. You're probably right. I can't argue with it. <laughs> <laughs> I have no rebuttal. It's like it's basically <laughs> when when you ask a congressman something and he'll just like word his way around it. Like mm-hmm. uh, they had this one question. It was like, so you know, you know, you show somebody your resume and it says you weren't working for a year, and you're like, oh well, you know, instead of saying, oh, I got fired and I couldn't find a job for a year, you're like, oh well, my the management at my previous company was going through some uh, job, you know, reconfiguring and I didn't mm-hmm. uh, restructuring you know, the, the company. Yeah, and just like yeah. go ahead and, you know, make it sound super good, but you got fired. Yeah, I year. got fired for <laughs> tax fraud. Job. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Look at this the definition of double speak any language that pretends to communicate but actually does not. <laughs> yes. Po- Yo, like that's politicians- how I speak all the time. I was Yo, literally, that's I just literally saw speak. that. Yeah, that's just <laughs> freaking Dothraki, bro. Like, There's, that's literally double speak right there. It's Phil's Phil's uh, how's Phil talks versus bro, that's my double speak vocalabry, bro. <laughs> vocalabry. Vocalabry. Mm, mm. Oh, baby. But yeah, the only reason I came across that word because I was looking up uh, C-SPAN and I was looking up uh, who was it. Ted Gowdy. Yeah, have you ever heard of that guy? Mm-mm. Or Trey I've Gowdy. I've never heard of anybody or anything you've brought up on this uh, <laughs> podcast. You need to get into government, buddy. He's the CEO <laughs> and founder of Sundance. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? I need to look up Trey Gowdy, man. Trey Gowdy. Just look him up YouTube. Trey Gowdy. Howdy, Trey Gowdy. He sounds like he looks like you. He's a, I don't really know who he is, but let me see. Uh... <laughs> Television news person. He's like, he like, I was hoping y'all would know. <laughs> he says, this, this is a legit question. Do y'all know former, who this is? <laughs> former politician, former prosecutor. There you go. Prosecutor. That guy. He was a South Carolina US representative. Anyway, this guy, he, um, he kind of like, you know, when somebody goes in front of the Supreme Court and they'll be asking them questions for, you know, they give them time to ask someone questions. This guy just like hammers people like, you know, you went out for a steak dinner on the taxpayer's money. Like, you know, just kind of, <laughs> you know, giving them hell. But this, yeah. like yeah. everybody is always just like fumbling over these words. And like, I don't know the way he. The way he words his questions and the way he gets the, the people to get so flustered, it's mm-hmm. 
It's pretty speak, hilarious. Perhaps. Double well, speak. I was looking up him, and he was like, I, I hate this double speak that I have to deal with with politicians, and that's why uh, I'm getting out of politics. And I was like, oh, double yeah. speak. Yeah, what the hell is that? YouTube. Went down a rabbit that hole might, on YouTube. That might need to be the name of our podcast. <laughs> it might, it might, might need speak. to be. Double speak. Welcome to Double Speak. Well, what is up, you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Today on Double Speak, we're talking about I nothing. <laughs> why I love doing that so much, bro. Bro, you belong. You're a content creator at heart. I, be- I belong freaking with the Paul brothers, bro. <laughs> what is up, you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Start vlogging. Mm. Bro, I should. If I had an interesting life, I would. Yeah, that's true. Someday, someday I would. <laughs> uh, we, we can still do our taco reviews. Taco. Oh. Would y'all be down? Ooh, I'll be down. Yeah. Till cast Taco Tuesdays? Ooh, I'm down. I'm down. I'm down. I'm like telling you, man, we're sleeping on this Till cast Tuesday. Bro. That's true. Shirt right here. Till cast Tuesday. Oh, I'm already Till cast Tuesdays. Tuesday. Hat? We, do need, we do need to get some Tilt merch going for sure, for sure. Don't we, though? Get I actually started already bracelets. working on it, you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just I keep forgetting about it. <laughs> Let's keep leaving it in the cart, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, yo, unless y'all, so have any, funny. unless y'all have any final thoughts, we're going to wrap this bad boy up, I think. Let's wrap. Why? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say why? Uh, it's nearing an what? hour and we ain't got no uh, topics because we don't plan. But it's all good. In the hood. Bro, it's like almost easier when you don't. Yeah, we yeah, have we just flowing. I think That's when we have something, just be like, hey, I got a, a consumerism. Yeah, at this point, at this point, we're just conversating, communicating. At this point, at this point bro, the money's flowing in, like content goes downhill, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, that's such a second thought. Facts. Speaking of money, did y'all buy Corsair like I told y'all to? Corsair? Negative. Corsair? My beard that. has, has Corsair. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I didn't. That, 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 well? that shit is booming. Booming. Why, though? I don't know. I don't what care. Is, what is Corsair? <laughs> it's like, it's a, like uh, computer, uh, computer oh, accessories right. like mice, right. keyboards, <clears throat> headphones. Mice. Interesting. Rats. Anyway, if y'all would have bought it when Bro, I told y'all too, y'all would have been up some. I'd be, I'd be lazy. I'd be lazy with my stocks. I just let that shit sit for a while. Yeah, I hold until, right. until the next month comes in, and I put like my next, my next chunk in there, and that I literally will check like once every two weeks to just like see if there's something new I should put something in. But like, right, fella, I don't, I don't keep to, up. Y'all need to look out for Alibaba. John's over I don't know why, oh but God. somebody sold some a bunch of people sold off on this. Like they were trying to short it or something, and that's gonna. I mean. I was looking at their numbers, and apparently Amazon sold like 10 billion in the first two days of their Amazon Prime days. That's a lot, right? It seems Freaking like it. Alibaba sold 60 billion in the first 30 minutes. Eef. Like, what, what the hell? There's, yeah, those I knew crazy they were like the, numbers. They're like the Asian, uh, Asian Amazon, they're cr- basically. They're crazy, bro. Yeah. They got massive. Bro, you on <laughs> that uh, Tim- Timothy Sykes uh, email list? But there's. <laughs> <laughs> No, nah, but they're more I'm like that guy up, bro. <laughs> He's like, yeah, join my course. They're more like wholesale, right? They're not like yeah. Amazon-y. Like they, they're mostly selling to sellers, right? Right. Like you could buy shirts to like make your own shirts. I mean, I'm sure they have yeah. some stuff on there that's branded, but not much. I know a lot of it is is a bunch of different manufacturers, right. like white labeled manufacturers and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Anyways, we're gonna wrap it up. For show for show. We appreciate everyone back tuning in. We'll be back next Tuesday. As always, leave us a review if you have time. It takes just a second. And follow us words, on social media. You, do. Uh, you can watch us or listen to us if you didn't know that. You weren't already aware. And we'll be back next Tuesday. We out. Filthy. Fuego 30. Your cast Tuesday. Whatever happened to Ty Lopez? Oh.